Okay, I'm going to go over a problem that I'm teaching in one of my finance classes, or a problem from one of my finance classes that I'm teaching. And this problem came out from uh, came from Pearson, my finance lab. And the, and the book it came out of is uh, Corporate Finance Online by Stanley Eakin and William McNally, which is a very good online book. It's very arranged very nicely. Uh, for teaching finance. Uh, the Pearson product, I believe, is just as good as the Connect pro product. Or they both have their good points. So, uh, anyway, this is where I got this book from, and I highly recommend this. This is one of the good products you can use. And uh, so, anyway, let's read the problem. It says uh, Claris Cosmetic maintains a net profit margin of 9.23% in a total asset turnover ratio of 1.48. Calculate the return on assets, ROA, of the firm. That's the first part. And that says the debt, debt to equity ratio is 36%. The long-term debt is 15000 And the interest payments and taxes are 4000 each. The EBIT is 29000 The earnings before interest and taxes is 29000 What is the return on equity or ROA? So that's the second part of the question. And then in the second part it says note the debt to earnings ratio is constructed as long-term debt in the numerator rather than uh, sometimes people use uh, 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 different things in the numerator such as total liabilities or something and uh, uh, calculate the ratio and then the third question is calculate the ratio that shows Claire's ability to meet their interest payments which is called the times interest earned ratio that's what they want to calculate so those are the three things we want to calculate so for the first part, then we want to calculate uh, the uh, ROA. Okay, um, so it kind of gives you it only gives you three things before it asks you to calculate that, right? It asks you it gives you the the profit net profit margin and uh, and uh, and and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the formulas right from the book. So the net profit margin, this is a formula. It also gives you the total asset turnover ratio. And the third thing is we need the formula for the return on assets because uh, that's what we need to calculate. Okay, so this problem is a little bit tricky because if you look at return on assets by itself, it wants a net income after tax. Well, we can calculate that. We could take the EBIT, the earnings before interest and taxes, and subtract 8000 and this would be $21,000. So that's very easy. But we don't have the total assets. Okay. So, um, so how can we get it using these two equations? Well, you, if you remember your math, the net income... after tax divided by the sales if you take that times the sales divided by total assets let me go ahead and underline this so if I underline this and underline this if you take that times well this would cancel out, right? And this would cancel out. And you'd end up with, and, then, and then this this is like dividing. If you divide two things by each other, you get one, right? So they cancel out. It would be one times that and one times that. So it would just be net income over after taxes divided by total asset. What happens to be the equation for this? Net in, so actually all you have to do, is if you look at all three of those formulas, it's just going to be equal to this times this. Okay, and we can go ahead and make that percent. Take it out at least two places. Let me put the formula in here for you. Okay, so this is why I like to kind of do things in a give and find solution format. Uh, it works very good in engineering. I, I'm formally trained an engineer. So I like to separate problems this way. Because you just don't get excited, you just take things one at a time. So all I did is I went and found the three equations, thought about it a little bit, and found the answer.
So it works very good. You just take things one at a time. You don't you don't get overwhelmed when you're solving a problem. So let's do this third part. I'm gonna leave a bit of let's do the second problem. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space. So the next thing is we want to calculate the return on equity. And so let's go ahead and get uh, the return on equity equation. I'll paste it here. Again, these are out of the book I just showed you, but you can get these on the internet or anywhere else. And then it also, in that problem, if you part, look, read that part of the problem, it talks about the debt to equity. So we want to go ahead and get that equation and look at it too while we're solving this problem. I'll just put it below. Okay. So, um, so we have the debt. Inc so what we need is the return on equity is the net income divided by the total stockholders' equity. Now we have to calculate the net income first. Uh, but uh, maybe we should do the common stock. So that's what we're going to have to calculate this second. So I'm going to kind of pull this down. So first, maybe we should do uh, the net income. We'll go to the net income after tax. Okay, so it kind of gives us a hint here, doesn't it? It says here, it says up here, the D, D, debt to earnings ratio is constructed with a long-term debt in the numerator. Okay, um, so that would be our, like our total liabilities, right? So we so we don't need to worry to have to calculate that, but we have to calculate uh, the common stockholders' equity. We have to calculate the denominator. But before we do that, uh, I guess I'm explaining this wrong. First, we have to get the common stockholders' equity. In order to get that, we already calculate. We have the debt to equity ratio right here. So we have this. We can calculate this. From that, we can calculate this. And then from that, we can plug that into here. And then we can calculate the return on equity. So let's get this net income after taxes first. So I'm going to go uh, uh, well, the net income after taxes, we just explained that. It's going to be equal to this minus this minus this. We have that. We're going to need that eventually. And then we know we could calculate the total liabilities. Well, let's just do it this way. We can calculate the common stockholder's equity. Um, so the common stockholders equity well we have that right here so remember if I take both sides of the equation times times this I'm gonna end up with common stockholders equity on the left and it's gonna cancel on the right and then I have to divide so basically I have to trade places with this this denominator goes over here and this goes back into the denominator so uh, well I'm sorry I'm looking at the wrong thing <laughs> We have total liabilities, so we so uh, you have to swap this with this. We have the debt to equity ratio right up here. So basically, the the common stockholders equity is going to be equal to the total liabilities, which is it tells here to use the the use uh long term debt. And then we're going to divide it by the debt to, divide divide it by uh, the debt to equity ratio, which we have right here. And we get the, the common stockholders equity. I'm going to go ahead and copy these formulas. Okay. And finally, we can solve for return on equity because now we have these two things in this equation. So it's equal to this divided by this. And you want to go ahead and make that percent again. Take it out two places. So now we have the first two answers. Now it's a good idea to highlight your answers. And then if you're going to save this, maybe you just come out in a quiz later or something. You could go uh, uh, ROA, ROE, and tie 
calculations. That way we have this, if you save this, you could you maybe, like I say, use it later on a quiz or whatever. So now I'm going to calculate the tie. That was the last thing I wanted to calculate. All right, so the tie, uh, we can go ahead and get the formula for the tie times, inter times interest earned. And that's the EBIT divided by the interest. So that one's actually pretty easy. It's equal to, we have the EBIT right here divided by the interest payment, all right, and that's 7.25. So that's actually a pretty easy one compared to the other other two we did. We had to do a little bit of thinking, right? So basically, I'm just trying to show you the type of strategies I use when I'm trying to solve a problem. It's always good to cut and paste the equations right beside so you can kind of look at them. Like this one was took a little bit of looking in order to see that this is on the numerator and this is on the denominator. If I multiply the two, the sales will cancel, and we got that, right? So Sometimes you have to look at it a little bit, think about it, in order to get the answer. Okay? So hopefully that helps on kind of how to maneuver some of these problems. I purposely did kind of a difficult problem because if you can understand this, you'll easily be able to do some of the other problems you have in your textbook. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you like my video, subscribe. Like usual, you can just hit on my picture, like, hit the like, like button, and that would help me out. So thank you. Bye.